This is part 7 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing POST method in ASP.NET Web API. So let's flip to Visual Studio now. First, let's comment this custom JSON formatter class that we have put in place in our previous video. I'm also going to comment this one line of code that we have in our register method to register the custom JSON formatter. Now let's flip to employees controller and include a post method. Post method allows us to add a new employee to our employees table. At the moment within the employees table we have got seven rows. So let's flip to Visual Studio and include a method for post. It's going to be a public method. Return type is going to be void and the name of the method is going to be post. Now to add a new employee to the employees table, we will have to pass the employee object. So we are going to pass the employee object as a parameter. Now where is the employee object data going to come from? When a client makes a request, the request is going to have request header, URI and request body. The data for the employee object is going to come from request body and we tell that to web API by decorating this employee parameter with an attribute and that is from body attribute. So basically this attribute is telling the data for the employee object is going to come from the request body. And now let's go ahead and create an instance of our employee db entities. Let's call this entities equals new employee db entities entities dot employees dot add. So to the collection we want to add the employee object that is coming into the post method as a parameter and then on the entities call save changes. Let's save our changes and give our solution a build. Build succeeded. Now let's flip to Fiddler and issue a POST request. So first of all, let's change the HTTP verb to POST. We want to POST to this URI. And remember, we have told the POST method that the data for the employee object is going to come from request body by decorating it with from body attribute. So within the request body right here, we have to include the data for the employee object. So here we have JSON formatted employee object. So I'm going to copy that and paste it within the request body. So we have got first name, last name, gender and salary. Now this is JSON formatted data so we will have to tell that to the web API that we will be sending JSON formatted data and we tell that by including content type header. So we are going to set this to application for slash JSON. Let's execute this request. So request completed. Now let's go to SQL Server Management Studio and reissue this select statement. Notice now we have eight records including the new one that we have just added. Now this works fine but the problem here is that if you inspect the response that we have got look at the status code in the response header 204 no content. That's because the return type of the post method is void. So if the return type of a method is void, by default, Web API is going to return status code 204, no content. According to the standards of REST, when we add a new item, we should actually be returning status code 201, item created. And along with the status code 201, we should also be returning the location that is the URI of the newly created item. So let's see how to achieve this. We will be changing the implementation of this post method. Instead of returning void, we are going to return HTTP response message. And then here, let's create a variable. Let's call this message. We are going to use the request object and then this request object has got create response method which is going to return us HTTP response message. So what is the status code that we want to return? We want to return created item created status code. So 
the status code that we want to return is created and we also want to return the employee object that we have just added to the database. So here is the employee object that we added to the database. So entity framework is going to populate this employee object with the ID. So if you look at what we have posted using Fiddler, so let's go to the Composer tab. So we have only have provided values for first name, last name, gender, and salary. We haven't supplied the value for ID column. ID column is an identity column, so SQL Server is going to auto-generate the ID column value. We don't have to supply that. And when this save changes method is called, Entity Framework is automatically going to update this employee object with the ID that is auto-generated. So we are going to also send the employee object back to the client. And then remember, along with status code 201, we also want to include the location, that is the URI of the newly created item. To do that, let's use the message object dot headers dot location equals, and if you look at what this property expects, it expects an instance of URI. So let's create a new instance of URI. And now here we want to include the URL, that is the location of the newly created item. And to do that, we are going to make use of the request object. And it has got request URI property, which is going to give us the URI to which we have posted the newly created item. And if you look at the URI to which we have posted, this is the URI. So request URI property is going to give us this full URI but the URI of the newly created item should also include the ID of the employee entity that we have just created. So we are going to append the ID of the employee entity. So to this request URI, let's get the ID of the employee and append it. Now, let's wrap all of this code inside a try block. And if there is any problem executing this code in the try block, we want to catch the exception. And we want to return that exception to the client so the client knows what has gone wrong. So here, let's use the request object again. And this time, we are going to use create error response method. Again, this method, notice it returns HTTP response message. And since there is a problem, we are going to issue an HTTP status code of bad request. And along with that status code, let's also return the exception object. So we want to return the message. So let's return the message and let's return the error response. All right, so let's give our solution a build. Build succeeded. Now let's issue another post request from Fiddler. So this time, here is another JSON formatted employee object. So let's copy that and paste it within request body of Fiddler. Let's execute this. Now let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio and issue the select statement just to make sure we have that employee inserted into the table. Notice the ID is 9 for the newly created employee. So now let's go to Fiddler and if we inspect the response that we have got, notice within the response header the status code now is 201 created. And if we scroll down a bit, we have the location that is the URI of the newly created item as well. So let's copy this header value and let's flip to browser and I'm going to paste the header value. Look at that. That is the URI of the newly created item. Look at the ID that is appended at the end. It is the ID of the newly created employee. So when we navigate to that URI, we have the newly created entity as expected. Now 
let's modify this get method as well. First, let's understand what happens when we request for an employee whose ID does not exist. So let's flip to Fiddler. We want to issue a get request. With get request, we don't need a request body, so let's get rid of that. And let's request an employee whose ID does not exist. 101 does not exist. So let's execute this and see what we get. So let's inspect the response. First of all, look at the response header, 200 OK. And if you look at what we have got back, we have got back null because we don't have the employee with the ID that we have requested. Now, this is a bit misleading. According to the standards of REST, when an item is not found, we should actually be returning status code 404, which stands for not found. Let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio and modify the implementation of this get method. Now, instead of returning the employee entity, we actually want to return HTTP response message. And here, let's create a variable. Let's call it entity equals whatever this line of code returns. Now, if entity is not equal to null. That means we have found the employee that we are looking for. So in that case, we want to return request.create response. So we have found the employee that we are looking for. So the status code is going to be OK. And we want to return the entity. If the entity is null, that means the employee with the specified ID does not exist. So in this case, we want to return request.create error response because we haven't found the employee that we are looking for. So the status code is going to be not found. And we also want to return a meaningful message. So the message is going to be employee with ID equals whatever ID that we have requested. The ID is coming into this method as a parameter. So ID dot to string. And to that, let's append not found. All right, let's give our solution a build. Build succeeded. Now let's issue another request. Notice now we get 404. So the status code in the response header is 404 not found. And if we look at the message that we got, employee with ID equals 101 not found, which is a bit more meaningful than returning status code 200 OK. Now, if we request for an employee ID that does exist, we get status code. 200 OK and the employee entity that we have requested. Here is the code for the post method and here is the code for the get method. Finally, let's quickly recap some of the important points that we discussed. If a method written type is void, by default, status code 204 no content is returned. When a new item is created, we should be returning status code 201 item created. With 201 status code, we should also include the location, that is the URI of the newly created item. When an item is not found, instead of returning null and status code 200 OK, return 404 not found status code, along with a meaningful error message, such as employee with ID equals 101 not found. Thank you for listening and have a great day.